positivity, motivation. Um, I did a video on Fresh Out about what happens when you're smart in prison. And uh, some of the comments I got were, were quite interesting and I want to share some of them with you guys. One of the comments was, Big Herc, it seems like what you're saying is that black people can be extremely racist toward black people. Did you find that white dudes would have the same attitude toward you? I am a white dude and couldn't give a shit what color a person is if they know shit that is of value, I'm all ears. Well, let me let me expound on that. Um, I did have um, black guys in prison who showed animosity towards me for no other reason that I was in the process of educating myself, that I spent a lot of time in a law library and that I spoke in a certain manner. Um, I've had guys ask me like, you know, where are you from? As far as brothers, like, you know, not knowing if I was American. I've had guys ask me, um, you know, are you military? You, you know, are you ex policeman? You know, just my mannerism and no, I grew up in a military background family and I just know how to interact with different people. And, uh, you know, not all the brothers in there had animosity for somebody who was educated because a lot of brothers on the East Coast were very educated, college educated guys, a lot of the five percenters, um, a lot of guys from um, uh, DC I met were, were very educated and they respected another educated black man. So it wasn't all the brothers in there, but I did experience what, I don't know if you want to call it reverse racism from other blacks in prison because of my educational background to some degree. But it was only a couple cats that were just haters, you know, and um, they couldn't stand the fact that they weren't that intelligent and they relied on brute force in order to get their respect rather than their brains. So that was where that jealousy came into play. As far as the white guys, um, a lot of the white guys actually showed more respect and wanted to communicate more to a degree as far as what they were able to because, you know, blacks and whites, you can't really kick it like that. But the white guys that I met when they heard me talk and, you know, I talked about different things I experienced or some of the things I, I did on the street, blah, blah, blah. Um, I developed relationships with those guys as far as friendships and they would share other knowledge, you know, things that they did, connections, books. And so it played to my advantage. One of my, my first mentors was a white guy, an older guy who was an ex-Vietnam vet. And he actually, you know, he actually tapped me. He seen me going to the law library and he was on the third tier, I was on the first tier. But somehow he used to always watch me and he's like, hey man, come here, let me talk to you. And uh, I looked up, he was on the third tier and I walked up to the third tier and I'm like, hey, what's up, man? He's like, um, what are you doing? I see you going to the law library all the time. I said, man, I'm trying to figure out how to get out of here early. I said, I don't wanna have to do all this time, man. I got uh, 120 months and I wanna try to get some time off so I can get home early or get out, you know, maybe there's some type of court error they made. And he said, come here, I got something for you, youngster. Let me show you some stuff to read. And he pulled out a couple books and gave me, um, you know, some uh, homework assignment, Black's Law, Congressional Acts, um, some stuff from the United States Attorney Manual. And I went and read it and um, I've had, I had a bunch of sleepless nights. Um, just my mind was, I couldn't rest, man. I felt like I got played, I, I was a sucker. I felt like I was just a total disappointment. I, I was a let down to my family and to the people that looked up to me by having committed to bank robbery. I just felt like shit. And so I studied, studied, studied. And he, uh, he kept feeding me information, man. And because he was an older white guy and people thought he was crazy, they didn't sweat me that much for hanging out with this guy. So I got a pass from a lot of the, the blacks at this spot because this guy, 
he helped a lot of them and they see me working with him so they felt that you know it was a good thing but he pointed out to me you know on more than one occasion when we would be standing on the third tier looking down and he said look at look at you know look at down there look at what's going on and i would see the guys down there and you know you see them grouped up it always be a lot of politicking and grouping in the, in the in the USPs. I mean, it was serious, man. It wasn't no, you wouldn't play no games. Wouldn't no, if somebody was talking to you in the room and in the, in the door, you know, you looked in, you, you kept walking, you mind your business because you don't want to hear something that can get you shanked. It, it, too many things were being spoken that was serious shit and it was best that you mind your own conversation. But he says, show me, look at me, show me different things and say, look down there. And he's like, man, you're not like them dudes, man. You, you, you got more that you could be doing. You got, you know, you got potential. And he instilled confidence in me, man, that I didn't have. Not to say that my grandmother, my mom didn't give me certain things as far as confidence, but as far as confidence in a manly way and um, like, self-esteem and myself to where like you know i could figure this shit out like I, I got myself in here i'm gonna get myself out and you know the more knowledge i got the more aware i've been i became the more self-conscious of my surroundings i became and he laced me up man og white dude laced me up so he he taught me a lot about the law about race about culture and, and and just you know looking beyond you know what you see it's about what a person has inside of them and um i carried what he gave me to the other spots i went to after that and i built on that foundation and i i had other groups study groups that i put together white guys asian guys um black guys, Belizean guys. I mean, you know, we had Mexicans, we had a every, little bit of everybody. And um, I became kind of like, you know, the person who would unite people. And so, yeah, it, it, it kind of led me, you know, led me on a path that I continued and it, it inspired me through my time. And I helped a lot of people in the process. Even though I wasn't able to crack the code to get out early, I did crack a mental code. I, I, I cracked a, a code of ignorance. So it was well worth it, you know, studying instead of sitting around and watching TV every day and dominoes and cars and, and sports and stuff like that. I, I studied and I really worked on my mental. But the sad part about that whole story is the OG, man, that old white guy that laced me up, ex-Vietnam vet, Harold. He uh, he overdosed in prison, man, off a of heroin. He was a heroin addict, man. And uh, he couldn't he couldn't control that, man. He, he, you know, he messing with them drugs. He had 30, 30 something years, man. And he, you know, overdosed in prison, died in prison. So sad ending, you know, and I was only with him for like 18 months. So I, I, you know, he, he had an impression on me though. And that was over 20 years ago, you know, Harold, man, the conversations we would have, I felt like, damn, man, this dude, you know, he, he just felt like the uncle I never had, but he was a good dude, man. White cat, you know, white cat. He was a good dude though. But yeah, overdose in prison from heroin, man. OG Harold. But, um, yeah, man. Fix.com to pick up. A limited edition GTA poster signed by me for $10 or with your purchase of a Wig Splitter Porsche t-shirt, I'll throw in a free poster signed. Officially, I only got one real spanking my entire life. My mom did the best a 14-year-old could do, raising me with love and instilling values that will last a lifetime. I was a straight-A student and lived to make her happy. So how did I go astray? A horrible stepdad that stole my self-worth and invoked fear turned me into a person that I struggled to overcome. From skateboarding to selling drugs, gang banging in juvenile hall, I got caught the same way many young promising men get caught up. I struggled to find my identity, getting mixed up in shootouts, crime, and the adult entertainment industry. 
This roller coaster continued as I juggled college, hustling, and Hollywood, eventually catching a federal bank robbery case. I found redemption in prison while serving a 120-month federal sentence and came out a man on a mission. I became a social media influencer with over half a billion views on YouTube and a life coach mentoring people all over the world. This is my journey against all odds. Oh shit, the popos are coming. I gotta hurry up and wash my ass. Go to bigkirk916.com, pick you up a bar of soap and wash your ass or else you're gonna be under arrest too. Oh shit. With Fresh Hop Ministries, we're doing a new program where we're doing a takeover of a mom pop cafe or restaurant and we're doing a pay it forward. So we're gonna offer free meals at this particular restaurant or cafe, mom pop, for a certain amount of time, and we are asking that you make a donation to pay it forward so that we can continue doing this program for other mom pop restaurants and cafes because we know that it's hard times out here. You have a lot of people that talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk, and so we're actually walking the walk. We've been doing it for over 11 years on social media. We've been getting shadow banned. We've been getting uh, demonetized. So we want to give back, and this is our way of giving back to helping everybody through these trying times with this economy. You know, a lot of churches, they got hundred billions of dollars, and you don't see them out here helping the people who are in times of need, but they're still taking in the form of donations. But how is it helping the community? We want to build a community sense where we help each other. We can all overcome. You can't sit around, wait for somebody to save you. You got to save yourself. And this is the way you do it. So by us being able to do these takeovers with Fresh Shop Ministries, with the mom pop restaurants and cafes, we want to build a film, talk to you guys, get your feedback on what's going on right now in society. Hopefully you guys find it in your heart to donate. This donation, which is a pay it forward, will allow us to do other mom pops around the country eventually. But right now we're going to be in uh, Southern uh, California and Los Angeles, Orange County. So, hey, reach out to your local businesses there. And if you are out of town in another area and you would like us to come there, if you provide the necessary means, we will come there also and do the same pay it forward. But right now, hey, if you're in lo locally in Los Angeles, Orange County, hit us up, freshoutseries at gmail.com. You can also make a donation on our link tree on our Instagram at Fresh Out Series.